Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have Dave Asprey on our show who not only did he create Bulletproof Coffee, which is absolutely amazing, he is the father of biohacking. He is the creator of the term biohacking. He like literally is in the dictionary now for biohacking. And if you don't know what buying biohacking is, you're going to learn all about it on this week's episode. And I'm going to tell you, it is going to change your life overall, but most of all with women. So keep listening. Welcome to another episode of the Ask Women podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Kristen Carney, along with Marnie Kinris, of course. And today we have a very special guest on because he's really successful. I mean, we have successful people on a lot, but not this successful. Basically, he's rich. Dave Asprey, everybody. <laughs> Basically, he's rich. Thanks. That was and a great intro. Now we are You're in welcome. love with him because that's the belief system that all women are just into rich dudes who are very good looking, which is not true. And that is the myth that we debunk on this podcast all the time. And you're but it also, is true that it, Dave is good looking. I was, uh, I'm feeling like you said I'm not good looking there. That <laughs> no, was, that was, not, that. That's not was that a neg? Are you negging <laughs> yeah. me? Did you listen to Neil Strauss? Are, yeah. are you reverse engineering all that pickup artist stuff? I'm a pickup artist, exactly. But I, we're going to debunk <laughs> some of these myths, even for good looking guys like Dave. See there, now I'm giving you a compliment. But, but before we start oh. diving in to all of the stuff that we want to talk about, I want to tell people about you, who you are, if they don't know who you are. And I know that many people don't know this about you, but you are very into biohacking. So I want to find out about you and then get a better understanding of what exactly biohacking is and means. All right. We can do that. Okay. So biohacking is a new word in the English language. It was added at the end of last year, one of 840 new words. And I'm in the definition. People call me the father. Wow. Yeah. That's well, amazing. I, was, I was almost going to sarcastically ask if you were part of it becoming a word because I just figured that would be absurd, but I, you really are I part of it that. becoming a word. Yeah. That's hilarious. So people say amazing. I'm the father of biohacking, it, but it, it's, it's actually not really that true because we've been biohacking for thousands of years. Uh, every, every culture that's been around for a while took some set of people and put them aside and said, hey, could you guys figure out that medical stuff, that whole happiness thing, the whole consciousness thing? And then they'd sit in monasteries and caves and huts and things like that. And then they'd spend a whole lifetime you know, staring at a rock and say, oh, here's what I noticed. And they'd write it down and give it to the next generation of people who would stare at the same rock until eventually they gained some awareness. And someone else was saying, if I you know, stick a needle here, what happens? And eventually, we actually learn we have some control over ourselves. And so there's a lot of ancient knowledge and wisdom. And my new book, which is about how to live to at least 180, the first chapter is about, hey, you know, these first cavemen. <laughs> One of them said, I'm going to change the environment around me. By the way, that's part of the biohacking definition, to have more control of my own biology. So that caveman said, I think I'll use fire to stay warm. Well, he changed the temperature of the world around him so he wouldn't freeze to death. Yeah. Score one for our ancestor because the caveman who didn't do fire isn't our ancestor. <laughs> and we've, we're still doing that. We're just doing it with anti-aging. We're doing it with neurofeedback and biofeedback and changing our nutrition so that we have more energy, so that we're younger, so our testosterone and other hormone levels are where we want them to be no matter how old we are. And we live in a world where it's easy to do that. It's awesome. I have a million questions and they're all selfish for me. So I'll talk about those after the podcast because I want to know how to like test everything for myself, all the hormone levels. But for the guys that are are listening to this show, because it is mainly a male audience of single men, uh, is there a way to use this principle? And I'm guessing there has been because I've, I've been a part of it with the pickup artist movement and the self-awareness movement and the modern man movement. But now in 2019, almost 2020, how are men biohacking themselves? What have you noticed? That sounds perverse. It does, yeah. <laughs> but- <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you can go in a lot of directions with that. The, the cool thing about biohacking is that there are a lot of women and a lot of men. In fact, on the Bulletproof pages, it's pretty evenly split between women and men. In fact, I think 60% of my Instagram followers are women. So some people say, oh, biohacking is a man's game and we're all going to go to the gym and lift heavy things. But, but here's the, the reality. Women are generally, on average, better at listening to their bodies than men are because we're just taught to like tough it we're out. We're just better at and, listening you know, just in general. 
Yeah. Right? What? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Point. Very awesome. Amazing. Yes. One point, king of all butter. Uh, but it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's totally true. Uh, on average, uh, you know, the EQ scores on women and men, there are differences between us and there are hormonal differences. There are, are brain structural differences and they're all, you know, it's all good. But if you were to say on average, how are you feeling right now? Your answer is probably going to be more accurate than mine. If we don't know anything else about you and me versus the fact that you're a woman and I'm a man. And so this means that women are actually pretty good biohackers because if you wake up in the morning, you're like, ah, I'm a little off today. And a lot of guys are like, I'm just going to tough it out. And I learned to do that when I was young. And so, you know, I'm just going to push through. And pushing through is great. That's resilience. But if you don't know what you're pushing through and why it's there, eventually you'll get tired of pushing through it. So a lot of the art of biohacking for men is saying there's kind of two things. And for women too, but but because your question is more for guys. There's some amount of energy you make every day, and then there's some amount of energy that you put to good use. And this is your good use is your definition of good use. And then there's some amount of energy that you waste for no reason. And some of that you waste on biological processes that are just to repair the excess alcohol you had the night before. Okay. <laughs> or to deal with the effects of a really bad night's sleep. Uh, and some of it is because you're overcoming all the angry and mean voices in your head. Uh, and that's just a, a process of personal development. So when you dial it all in, you're like, oh, now I can make more energy than I was supposed to. I waste less energy biologically than I was supposed to. And I don't waste much energy at all on useless thinking patterns and being reactive to the environment around me. And when you do that, like, oh my God, there was this huge untapped potential of stuff inside me so I can do the things that I want to do. And that results usually in better relationships. Uh, you feel better. You're less emotionally reactive to things you shouldn't be. And it kind of okay, makes so you the how boss. do you do that? So, so for guys, and for even for myself, and especially for Kristen, because you know you've talked to her before, she's got a lot of things going on in her head. How do, how do we get to that first place where we can quiet that noise so that we can start utilizing the energy in other areas. Now, it's funny because I went there also uh, when I, I started this. I used to weigh 300 pounds. I was having cognitive dysfunction. I was actually anxious and didn't know it. I was actually pretty angry and anxious all the time, but I would just say, no, I'm normal. Wait, you didn't? I, Wait, this is from I your coffee. About you. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was, I was like a pissed off computer computer hacker 300 pounds arthritis in my knees since I was 14 high blood sugar what? I, like if I if I ever lost a lot of weight I would just start all conversations with hey by the way <laughs> my name's Kristen and I used to weigh 300 pounds <laughs> just so they That's know like crazy. where I came from like look at you people don't believe it but there was a I think it was a the earlier this year episode of men's health magazine and they came to my house. Okay, I, I might have had some body issues having weighed 300 pounds and having stretch marks. And they want to do some photos. So we're doing photos. And they're like, okay, take your shirt off. And I'm like, hold on a second here. I know what your cover model people do. And they're taking diuretics and they're doing spray tans and they're fasting for three days and all this crap. And I didn't do any of that. <laughs> and, and they're like, no, really, just give it a shot. If it doesn't look good, we won't use it. So there is a zero prep picture of me with my shirt off, full page uh, in, in a magazine. But the reason right that you now. can tell it's real is if you look really closely, you can still see the stretch marks. They didn't airbrush them out. So, but yeah, I, I really was 300 pounds and it sucked. And so here's the, the biggest piece of advice I can give for everyone listening. If you want to do better on the voice in your head, the personal development, uh, meditating, all that stuff, that requires willpower. We okay. now have studies, and I wrote a whole book about this. Look, willpower comes from electrons. Electrons come from taking air and food and combining them effectively. So if you want to do the personal development work and you don't have enough electrons, you will struggle greatly and suffer and you might make some progress. However, if you I eat would say the right... that to like my teachers in high school. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't have a, enough electrons for this homework. <laughs> it's actually very real. And some of it I is... I believe it. I you're believe just it. more interested in something else and your brain isn't baked all the way when right. you're in high school. Uh, but... It, it is true for adults too. It's not that you're a bad person or a moral failing. Like I didn't have the energy for it. It's actually true. Your cells couldn't make energy for that, so you didn't do it. But then you blamed yourself for being bad or whatever. And you, half the sorry, voice in your head. I'm going to interrupt for a is second. That. Is it because that you were overweight and that you had inflammation in your body that you weren't able to 
have the energy for it? Or you're saying that, that it wasn't developed for you yet? Well, 48% of people under age 40 have early onset mitochondrial dysfunction, according to uh, some recent research that came out. What mitochondrial dysfunction is, a fancy way of saying you suck at turning food and air into electrons to power everything you do. That is me. So... Half of people listening, whether you're fat or not, have that. If you have 20 or more pounds of extra weight, you definitely have mitochondrial deficiency because that's one of the major causes. You're storing the food instead of burning it because your metabolism is broken. So we can fix it. And it's not even that hard to fix it. People have lost more than a million pounds on the Bulletproof diet. Um, So if I can lose 100 pounds coming from where I did... Um, with the lifestyle, especially that I have now, and be walking around at you know, 10.1% body fat uh, without dieting and even exercising very much, I'm pretty sure that if you're 25 or 30, which means you have different testosterone levels, you have more youthful energy and all that stuff, it doesn't matter if you're fat or you have a really bad voice in your head or you have a porn habit or whatever it is, you have more energy to hack that than, than someone who's twice your age, most likely. So tweak your diet a bit, improve your sleep a little bit, and all of a sudden, the thing you're working on that's that's been tormenting you in your head, it's just not as big of a mountain anymore. And that's the biggest hint for becoming a better human being. In, okay, wait. Elaborate on that because I want to fully understand and I want the people who are listening to understand that as well. So tweak your diet a bit, tweak your sleeping habits a bit, yeah. but what what is the bit? So for each person, is it different? Because if uh-huh. you're saying that they're having each... like So I... I discovered functional medicine about nine years ago. I had a stroke when I was 20 years old. I had continuous bloating, acne, hair loss for for most of my life as a child. It kept me indoors many times because I was so uncomfortable. Anyway. Wow, you were both just like horrific. (laughs) If we had met when we were young, we would have been love at first sight. I know, we would have been love with each other. But so so I had gone to Ayurvedic doctors, Chinese doctors, all these different doctors, my regular doctors. Nobody could ever find answers for me. Or at least if they found answers, they were short-term fixes. And I continuously changed my diet over and over again. So finally, when I did find functional medicine and I had a doctor who was able to do stool samples and do blood tests to find out the intolerances that I had to foods, and I'm sure that things have changed tremendously in eight years, but I was able to see certain things that I was putting into my body that for me, I thought were healthy or good for my body, but it turned out that my body either wasn't able to digest them or that because of leaky gut, I had created an actual allergy to it. And those foods were attacking my body, which was creating all of these other reactions in my body that were negative and making me horribly uncomfortable. When I started eliminating those foods, which is a lot of foods, I did see a huge change for myself. So for for other people who are listening, how how do they just make those little tweaks? Or how, how would you suggest that they do that? One of the biggest things that you can possibly do is figure out which foods are compatible with your biology. And you did that. I ended up having to do it too. Well, so how how do other people do it? Who like so my tests were extremely expensive. Okay, good, good, good. Like me. So the expensive version is going to cost you 200 bucks. And it's a a test kit called Viome, V-I-O-M-E. And they take a little tiny poop sample, like a little cotton Q-tip swab thing, not a not a big chunk. (laughs) <laughs> Which is kind of like something that's going to inhibit anyone from doing a poop test because you're like, that's gross. I sent them like a whole uh, anyway. poop. <laughs> like the fact, that there's poop, the fact that there's poop in the mail is it was so FedEx. upsetting. It's like bad enough to be a post like marker, FedEx isn't it? There's a big sticker right. on the outside. It's like the poop emoticon, but it's real. It was like in a French yes. fry container. That's what that I put it into. Food. It was disgusting. It was... <laughs> anyway. It, it's so unpleasant, but... It's kind of part of it. But the Viome test is not that bad. It's like a little tiny vial of of stuff. And what they do is they look and they say, all right, here's all the species of bacteria in your gut and other things like viruses and fungus and everything. And here's what foods they like and don't like. And they'll tell you, for you, don't eat kale. A surprising number of people get tweaked by kale. It's actually not that big of a health food. Plus it tastes bad. No, it doesn't. I love kale. Anyway. (laughs) Um, There's also, uh, most people, whole grains are not going to be good for you. Uh, But there's other people, look, you might have a sensitivity to eggs. And so there's a lot you can gain. And Viome isn't going to tell you allergies, but it'll tell you what your bacteria are doing. There's a variety of straight up blood allergy tests that you can do, but... What I recommend that's free 
And go to the Bulletproof website, and you can going, right? uh, search for the Bulletproof Roadmap. And it, it, like I said, it's free. I'm not trying to sell anything. But this is the entire Bulletproof diet on a single page. And it says, look, here's the foods that are safe for almost everyone. There's the kryptonite foods that suck for everyone. You might get away with it, but they're going to cost you. And in the middle of suspect foods. And so don't eat any suspect foods for two weeks. It's pretty easy. You're going to eat you know, some veggies and some meat and stuff like that. And at the end of two weeks, you're going to feel really different. And then you go out and you have the deep fried pizza bomb or whatever it is you eat. And the next day, you're going to be like, what just happened to me? And like, there you go. You've proven to yourself that something in that meal was kryptonite for you. And from there, it's pretty straightforward to just say, all right, I'm going to dial it back in. And the book is largely about how to do that. It's what are the foods that work for almost everyone and why? Just eat more of those. And it turns out you're probably eating a lot of crappy fat. If you just never ate anything fried again, you're probably going to have 20 more years of functional life. You're going to have better skin, better hormones, better blood sugar regulation, and less body odor. Like fried stuff, I don't care if it's fried mushrooms and calamari fried by Tibetan monks, it's still not good for you. So we did. That's interesting. That, sorry to cut you off. Um, that's so interesting about the the smell better thing because I never, ever, ever had BO because I'm amazing and and not a real human. And then suddenly I started getting really bad BO and I, I had no idea why out of the blue. I'd never had to worry about deodorant before. And now I'm all about constantly trying out new deodorants. And so do you think it's maybe something I'm eating? Almost certainly. And it's probably your gut For bacteria. Sure. Um, how old are you? 36. 36. Don't look a day over 29. Yeah. I was totally oh. confused. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're, <laughs> that was not pre-planned. You didn't already have that in no, your head. No, of course not. Ready to go. So there are things that happen over time to your gut bacteria. And I just wrote this book, Superhuman, which is you know, how do you stay at the age where you are for a very long time or even age backwards. And there's a predictable decline in the number of gut bacteria that you have. So you could try something like a prebiotic, and I make one called Inner Fuel for Bulletproof that's uh, they quadrupled my gut bacteria. It turns out young people have lots of species, old people have less. So you're far from old people, but you're not 20 anymore. So for everyone, you will live longer and feel better and have less toxins and look better, as in less muffin top, if you have enough food for your gut bacteria. That means you eat a ton of veggies or you take some prebiotic fiber. And I... What does this what does this do to men's sexuality? It, does it help in the in the wiener area? Oh well, prebiotics, <laughs> no. Having a, a girlfriend who smells good always helps. But <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk wiener hacking, there's a whole chapter in my new book that goes deeper into that stuff than you would ever imagine. But we can Oh awesome. All right. You want to talk about that? Speaking of deep. Yes. All right. There are some new technologies that are insane for doing things that have been the dream of men for generations that actually work. And one of the things that I write about in Superhuman um, is a technology that increased the, permanently increased the size of my penis. What? I think it's just because you lost weight, and so it looks bigger. Uh, (laughs) It's to the point, and guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you walk past yourself naked and you see yourself in the mirror, you just look the way you look and you don't notice anything. And I remember the first time I saw my ribs in the mirror when I, I lost all this weight, I walked past, I was like, oh my God, I see my ribs. And you're like, what the heck? But after I did this, and this is a sonic shockwave treatment, I've had my stem cells injected in my junk. Uh, and I even put up a video of me doing it, a tastefully shot one what? where you don't have to stare into the sun or anything. But I walk past the mirror, I'm like, what the heck? Like, that's not my penis because it's noticeably bigger. My wife and I had to change positions because it made a difference. What? So, th- this really? is real. Like, th- th- really, this is actual technology. It's designed for erectile dysfunction. Um, but I don't have erectile dysfunction. Uh, it's never been an issue for me. So, uh, I did this mostly now. because I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to do a podcast about it. And there's shower and there's grower. And there's a very noticeable difference in both. Um, Wait, so you're saying and- that you... You did some sort of, sorry, cell implant? I, I didn't yep, catch that. I took that. my stem cells out of my own body. Or I said I had a doctor do this with me. Um, and then they injected my stem cells directly into the penis. My wife did the same thing for her vagina. Um, of course, with her stem cells, not mine. And that makes a big difference. 
I would think so. That'd be kind of weird. It would be so awesome if she grew a tiny little. Yeah, thing. I'm like, I don't know if I should be turned on by that or not. Uh, <laughs> if so. you did that, that'd be a turn on because you're like, I made that happen. She now has a penis. That's interesting. Wait, so yeah, I, I don't know if that's really the vibe I was going right. for, but uh. but okay. So from your stem cells, how so stem cells cause repair of inflammation. And they cause tissues to be younger. So for for women, it's you know more lubrication, spongier tissues. And since the penis is also spongy tissue, same thing happens. But then there's a technology called Gaines wave with a shock wave. It's a it's a sound shock wave. It's like a little sonic jackhammer. So you put lidocaine on your junk. A doctor comes in and uh, uh, basically has this little thing that looks kind of like a vibrator, but it's bigger, and just uh, spends about 10 minutes going up and down and creating these micro traumas that don't hurt because it's all numb anyway, and you're fine three or four hours later when the numbness wears off. But it causes new nerves and new blood vessels to grow. So you do that, and you take some various amino acids and things like that that improve blood flow in the body, and... Holy crap, I, I could not believe it. It, it took a, two treatments and about three weeks after the second treatment, I'm like, this can't be happening. Like, like I, they, they don't really make those claims. Like your pants but didn't fit anymore. Are, no, no, really, stuff like that. It's not like I'm you know, like, a horse or anything, but, but it was... I, but, but maybe a different race. It was about 15% bigger. What? Wow. Wow. How did you even think, who said to you, if you put stem cells down there, you'll maybe look maybe more like a black dude? How did that come to be? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, where, I, look, I, I'm planning to live to 180 years old. Uh, my my new book called Superhuman is like, here's all the tech that you've never heard of. And I'm pretty sure that most people listening to your show have never, never knew you could actually change the flaccid and full size of your penis. You actually can do that. And is it you can get to younger. Do this? Sorry that I keep interrupting you, but it, it it's okay. It's going to cost a couple grand. Okay, um, and that's not cheap. But given how much people spend on sex it. aids or Viagra, <laughs> it's not that expensive either. Does it? And it, it does fix ED as well. But how did you figure that out? It's like this vault of information that oh, yeah. you have. That well, I don't have any idea how well, you f- you found. It, you know what it's like to be sick and go to the Ayurvedic doctor and go to all these different doctors and just to get well. I did that because I was old in my 30s. I had a high risk of stroke and heart attack, the chronic fatigue syndrome, all the crap. And so I got to know all the top experts. I started running an anti-aging nonprofit research group. And now because I'm you know, the father of biohacking, all the cool stuff that some crazy inventor somewhere figured out, they, they bring it to me and I get to try it. Like I'm sitting now recording this on top of a a million dollar lab that became the basis for Upgrade Labs. It's one of the companies I started. See, I told you he had money. I <laughs> now he's sitting money. on his cash too. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm about an entrepreneur. It. He's on a pile. Here's the thing about entrepreneurs you guys should know if you ever date an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs, generally, their companies have money, but that doesn't mean the entrepreneur has money. I have learned That's that. Right. I'll still tell my friends that he does. There you go. Because the companies, I've raised $70 million in venture capital for Bulletproof. That means Bulletproof is only part mine. And so I have a responsibility to my investors to make sure they get paid. Mm. But that said, we did make investments in cool gear to say, hey, here's the limits of human performance. Oh, it turns out we haven't figured out what they are yet, but let's explore them. So I get to meet all the cool people. I get to interview them on Bulletproof Radio. And then I get to go try it. And then I shoot a video or I record a podcast. There's a whole episode where I interview the doctor who's literally, you know, shot stem cells in my in my equipment. And it, it's kind of embarrassing on one level, but on the other one, you're like, look, Fine. who's gonna, who else is going to talk about this? So there's those things. I've had the, the regenerative factors, these stem cells put in every joint in my body, all the injuries I took in soccer when I was young, playing when I was young and fat, uh, those are all reversed. Uh, my wife had stem cells put in her neck where she heard it when she was nine. She fell out of a two-story building and was unconscious for three days. She can turn her head for the first time in her adult life all the way. And this kind of radical healing, so the stuff that you just think you're stuck with, you're not stuck with it. But is this is this like common and, practice or is this still in the exploratory phases that you're getting special access to? 
Like so, so this is a new space in, for me. So as I was saying to you before the podcast started, that, that's yeah, okay. that my my husband, I've always been very fascinated by food, the way that it affects your body. I have a lot of friends who are in the nutrition space, uh, entrepreneurs in that world, and so. But my husband's been very into it lately, and listening to I think it's like Max Louvre or whatever his name was. But anyway, I think that's where he found out about you. Oh yeah, Matt, Max is a Max is a friend. He started a, a biohacking blog. Probably about three years into uh, into the the bulletproof conference, he's been on my oh, show. Oh, it's a wonderful! Back. So I think that is where he heard about you from. Anyway, so but now because my husband is very into that stuff, I like I had kids, so I sort of stopped being so into me and perfecting me, and just focused on my children and my clients that I work with and helping men get better. Um, but so all of this stuff is now coming up that I was talking about eight, ten years ago or fascinated by, and he's so immersed in it. And so sometimes it's difficult to know if this is like stuff that's out there that everybody's doing or if it's just these few individuals that are talking about these practices. So again, to my question. Oh, it, it's everybody. It okay. it, it's my job to make this happen for everybody. And there are millions of people. There's articles in Glamour talking about biohacking. And certainly I mentioned Men's Health, but Outside Magazine, New York Times, it, it's everywhere. And I've, I've been on Dr. Oz a couple of times and the idea is really straightforward. It's like, look, if your body is doing something you don't like, then you have to do something about it and you can do something about okay. it. Well, so actually, I, I would love another list of some resources from you because I, I love that you just gave that website called, uh, it's V-I-O-M-E. I don't actually know how you pronounce it. Like that is an amazing resource to be, a, to be able to Viome. test your gut. Is there something like that? And this is selfishly for me that I'm asking, but to test your hormones because I, I, I completely believe in everything that you're doing and I love everything that you're doing. But I, I do think that sometimes resources are limited for people. So I, well, I had, yeah, sorry, go on. If you go to my blog, daveasprey.com, I have a whole bunch of, of posts about hormones. The new book, Superhuman, has a whole chapter, including resource links for where to go to order hormone tests at home. And it used to cost yeah. thousands of dollars. When I was 26, I, I had more estrogen and less testosterone than my mom. True story. But no one tested this 20 years ago when I was 26. So it turns out now for 150 bucks, you can have a test kit sent to your house <gasps> and they'll send out send it out. So all of those links and all are on DaveAsprey.com. Just search for hormone, hormone testing. And what you're going to find is that a surprising number of people under 25, men and women, or sorry, under 35, um, are deficient in testosterone. And if you're a woman running around going, I felt pretty good. But I just, I, I'm getting flabbier than I was. And, you know, I'm just, I'm a little tired. I just care a little bit less than I did. And there's these little kind of niggling yes. things inside of you. That can be low testosterone. And when women get just the right amount of testosterone for them, they are so full of life and vibrancy and your brain works really well. And you have a much better time in the bedroom. And if you're a guy and your testosterone is low and you don't know it, like in the case for me, your desire to go out and kill it, like just to do something big, to show up at work and like get it done and go out on, on a date. And it's just, it's flat. Like, and you're just like, hmm, I guess I could do that. And, and you're, you're going through the motions, but the, the spark behind it isn't there. So if that's what's going on, it's not very hard to do it. And here's the thing. You, it'll be such a gift to you if you spend the 150 bucks or 200 bucks, whatever it's going to cost on a, on a test to see your hormone levels when you're 30, when you're 25, 35, whatever. Now you know what's normal for you. When you are 55, do you want to have the hormones of yourself when you were 25? Or do you want to have the average hormones for a 55-year-old? Yeah. You ever see the movie Grumpy Old Men? Yeah. I, I think I start in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what low testosterone does for men. So there is a great argument. Most guys over 40 with small amounts of testosterone replacement, they like their life a lot more. And some people in their 20s and 30s, it's medically useful and necessary. But look, if you're 25 and you're going to the gym and you have adequate muscle mass, get a test so you know your numbers. You don't want to or need to go on testosterone replacement. You do that when your body isn't making as much as you want it to. Well, it's so funny that you're talking about uh, testosterone right now because I swear to God, and this is going to sound very gross, but before you brought it up, I was sitting here feeling my mustache thinking, do I have a mustache? So I think I'm producing 
too much testosterone. Too much testosterone? Well, no, I well, just have a little fuzz. Something. And I'm, I was basically sitting here assessing, is this more fuzz than normal? But at the same time, you said if you have higher testosterone, then you'll be functioning better or feeling better. I don't feel great necessarily, so I can't say that it is extra testosterone, but I do have a little fuzz. Anyway. A lot of women worry, oh my goodness, if I have the, the right amounts of testosterone, if I increase it, I'm going to get a mustache, I'm going to grow a goatee, I'm going to get a really large clit, uh, you know, my voice is <laughs> going to deepen. I would do it for that. <laughs> Um, you have to take bodybuilder level right. amounts of testosterone as a woman to do it. But here's something really interesting. If you take a tiny amount of bioidentical testosterone, um, like a, a kind of cream that you would use as a, a man for replacement or, or for a woman, it's something you just smear a little bit anywhere you have thin skin on the body. But if you put it on the vulva um, of a woman, the compounding pharmacists and functional medicine doctors call that scream cream because topically applied testosterone on a woman will cause huge amounts of blood flow and really intense uh, sexual that? experiences. Wow. Wait, where do we get this? Well, it's testosterone replacement cream. If you actually go online, you can probably find it. You're supposed to have a prescription for it, but they call it scream cream. Wow. So scream and cream will make you the screen queen. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. And... It's it's a joke from functional medicine, um, but it it really does work, and it's just a sign of how impactful testosterone is for our sexual desire. But the way you would take it as a woman is usually uh, you can get a pellet where they do once every four months they put a tiny little pellet under your skin, or you can use a little cream that goes under your armpits or on your perineum, uh, and it just soaks in. But you. Your brain, it is sharp. And I know so many women, hundreds of women who've, who've tried this with their, their doctor's help, with a prescription, and with medical lab testing. And universally, it's like, oh, I got my life back. Oh, and my yoga pants look really good on me. And like, it, it's a big deal. And for guys, it's like, oh, I grew my abs back. And I have, you know, I wake up with a kickstand and maybe that wasn't happening as reliably. And, and so this is one of the, <laughs> you never heard of waking up with a kickstand? Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to tip over in the morning. And then, <laughs> we evolved this way. <laughs> That's so funny. No, this is, are there, are there any studies right now that show that there's any possible negative side effects from doing any of this stuff? I guess when you're not doing it with a medical doctor and you're just doing it on your own. Well, if you're doing it on your own, you can mess yourself up. But also, it's not that hard. If you order a lab test and say, okay, here's what my numbers are, and then you order online uh, some prescription compounds, usually you have to order those from another country, you can legally get a three-month supply of almost anything that's not a scheduled substance, as long as you have a prescription from a doctor anywhere on the planet. You could do that. And then you could say, okay, I'm going to do this for a month and I'm going to test again and see what happened. That's pretty much what your doctor is going to do. So should you go and work with a functional medicine doctor who's going to say, oh yeah, by the way, you forgot this and have a bunch of knowledge? Yes, you should. But if you don't have the money to go to a functional medicine doctor and you don't have insurance, well, you could just sit there and not have adequate levels or you could decide to test it yourself and then uh, and then you know, replace your testosterone. I would encourage you to see a doctor if at all possible. That's a really good idea. I also believe it's a fundamental human right to own your own biology and do what you want with it, even if it's right. a question. question. About, the tes- about the testosterone, do you think that if a man is low on testosterone and gets whatever he, you know, needs to get to adequate levels, will that change his vibration toward women? Oh, yeah. So they'll sense For sure, like, like even what sense- you said... Yeah, he was saying before about like, sorry, that we, this is the problem with Zencaster, and I'm sure you have this as well. You can't see each other, so it's hard to not well, talk no, over. Well, Dave does oh, use yeah. a camera. We're, he's smarter than us in that uh, sense. No, I, I have yeah, a camera. Yeah, Dave Wait, uses a camera. Marty and I don't want to be taped. Oh. No, we, yeah, no, we went to Skype, an option. I think, right? You can do Skype and Zencaster yeah. at the same oh, time. That's what I do. Well, so, oh, now I forgot what I was going to be asking before. But no, but you were saying, Dave was saying that like men who have low testosterone, there's other men who have higher testosterone who are like, yeah, let's go do this and this and this and this. But men who, who aren't aware that they have a lower testosterone level, either from foods or inflammation, whatever it's from, or even just from just naturally who they are, they don't have as much as a drive to do things, whether those drives are right, to go play baseball or to go and approach a woman. 
I didn't necessarily really mean though the drive to do things. I'm almost wondering if a woman can sense it. If a guy is sitting there and yeah. has no, you know, motion on his face and is not saying anything and is not doing anything and he has higher testosterone versus lower testosterone just sitting there, could she tell the difference? Like sexually, would she be more attracted to him just in a... Probably. Yeah. And it, it's not necessarily to say women are attracted to men with higher testosterone because you can, you know, testosterone can give you a BO. Yeah. It, but what will happen is when a guy has more desire, not just testosterone goes up, but the pheromones go up. And when pheromones change, if the woman is tuned in to the type of pheromones the guy makes, and it's very individualized, he can be really yeah. attractive. Did you meet your wife and before you had um, your testosterone levels tested or after? I was on testosterone when I met my wife. She didn't have a chance. <laughs> Actually, I want to take a quick <laughs> break and then I do want to dive in a little bit more into, yeah, your meeting with your wife if you're open to talking about that. Uh, all right. We, we can talk about how to make yourself more attractive to women using testosterone and pheromones. I've got a story that'll blow your mind. Oh, I love it. All right. We'll be back in a minute. Aging is really not as bad as people make it out to be. It comes with wisdom, but it also comes with some things that are a little bit of a downer. No pun intended. Actually, a lot of pun intended. Did you guys know that 40% of men by 40 struggle from not being able to get or maintain an erection? Mm. Well, thanks to science and the awesome men's wellness brand, 4HIMS, you don't have to struggle anymore because 4HIMS makes it super easy to get help with that friend or enemy we call Ed. HIMS connects you with real licensed doctors and FDA approved pharmaceutical products to treat Ed. And what's even better is you don't have to worry about going to the doctor multiple times. It's so easy, so quick, and if you're approved by the doctor, products are shipped directly to your door. And I've heard these things can be quite expensive, but with For Hims, they're really affordable. Try Hims today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash wants ed. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash wants ed, even though we know you don't want it. Forhims.com slash wants ed. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if your prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. So remember, that's forhims.com slash wants ed. All right, we are back and we are going to dive into Dave's personal life. And uh, well, not that, you know, the increased size of your penis and other topics about your body that you've discussed in the first half of the show were not personal. But now we we want to switch gears a little bit and talk about you meeting your wife. And that story. And just yeah, a little bit about... It's going to blow up. Yeah, yeah, about your story, about how that happened. I, I still want to tell you one more story about pheromones. Yes, of course. We want to hear it. So I, I definitely cover testosterone replacement in Superhuman. But in my book, uh, Game Changers, the last book that I wrote, I write about the effect of ejaculation on testosterone levels and pheromones. And there's something that didn't make yeah. it into the book. But actually, the, this whole general thing went into the book, but the one case I'm going to tell you about didn't. There's an old Taoist practice, and there's an equation that says, for men, the more you ejaculate, the less you're going to live. So they'll tell you straight up, based on your age, you shouldn't ejaculate more often than you know, once a week or once every three days or once every 10 days. And as you get older, you should ejaculate less. But if you want to live a very long time, you ejaculate only once every 30 days and you keep your orgasm to less than an hour for a guy. Great. So we're going to have a, we're going to have a lot of old virgins. Uh, it's not okay. about no sex. It's about no ejaculation. And Okay. Yes. There we go. Yeah, that's So true. I'm like, okay, these guys sound like they're full of crap. I'm going to disprove them uh, and might as well have fun trying it. So I tracked my... Yay daily happiness and with uh, my wife's uh, you know support I said, all right let's let's do this <laughs> so I published my whole data for a year and I'll tell you flat out there is such a thing as an ejaculation hangover for guys so the day after you ejaculate you are less yeah, you're just less close uh, with your partner you're um, just less interested in them uh, and you're actually less satisfied with your job and with your really? life. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's a subtle thing, but it, it it'll show in the data. And this is repeating what, and I did all the research, wrote a couple older posts on this before I put it in the book. Um, there's huge Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, martial arts, uh, Napoleon Hill. Uh, there, there's, so there's all sorts of people who talk about this, but no one wants to talk about it because who wants to talk about sex? Because sex is sticky and 
you know, a little bit. Literally, yeah. Yeah, I mean, literally. It's, it's, it's like it's both a spiritual thing and it's fun and everyone does it, but we don't talk about it because, you know, it's sex. So I said, all right, I'm just going to talk about this. And one of the experiences I had when I was attempting to go for 30 days without ejaculating, by the way, I didn't always succeed in going 30 days. It's really, really difficult to do that. Yeah. But because it's not like you're not having sex, you're having sex. And the less you ejaculate, the more sex you want to have, the more oxytocin you have, the more your partner's happy. Because for women, orgasms are really good. There's no aging effect from them. It's, it's anti-aging for women. Yeah. So... So I'm gonna <laughs> real old, real fast. So I'm, I'm at a so conference. Young. Okay. <laughs> I, in fact, I remember this well. I'm at the Paleo FX conference, one of the early ones. I'm um, having dinner, and I've been it's 25 days since I've ejaculated. I'm definitely having sex with my wife. And any guy who's you know gone a while without ejaculating, you're kind of like it kind of changes your energy. So I'm sitting down, and this woman, real attractive, she sits next to me, and she goes what are you doing to me? And I go, I don't really know. And she says, I've never said this to a guy uh, before. She said, but I just want to F you. What? <laughs> and I'm like, That's as amazing. a former 300 pound computer hacker, I'm like, this is a really good day. I'm like, well, you know, and she goes, I'm not, she goes I know you're married. Like, I'm not actually going to do this with you, but like you are doing something to my energy because I don't feel this way. And I, I kind of laughed. I said, well, yeah, that's pheromones. Um, and that's because, you know, I'm running this experiment with my wife and et cetera, et cetera. So we laughed about it and all. But you could tell it, it was like her head snapped around. She's like, you are doing this. So I'll what tell you. What did she say that this was? When you, she didn't know what it was. Oh, she just okay. knew that like you have a mad power and like you're making me wet sitting here and I'm staring at you and I'm thinking thoughts that I don't normally think. It's because she's pale. Though. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, she was paleo, but <laughs> you know, it's 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 you know kind of embarrassing to talk about stuff like that. But also, like, look, something noticeable was going on there, and I told her what it was, and she just laughed and I was like, okay, you know that that's that could be it. That's what it is. But I did notice the less I ejaculated, which after seven days of not ejaculating, your testosterone doubles. I'm about to have a an amazing guest on Bulletproof Radio who you would never believe who it is, but a very famous author who's been doing this for a long time and never told anyone. But um, it doubles after seven days. So if you're walking around like that, I would notice heads would turn and women would just pay way more attention to me. Partly my testosterone was higher, partly my pheromones were higher. And also, honestly, look... One of the hardest things you can do is you can learn how to fast and just say, I'm not going to eat for a day or two. And it's really good for health, but your body's going to be like, you're going to die. And if you think fasting is hard, deciding you're not going to ejaculate for a while, your body's like, the species will die if you don't ejaculate right. soon. Seriously, like, like no babies will happen, don't you know? But when you are man enough to own that and be like, I'm going to choose when I ejaculate, I'm going to choose when I eat, my body is not in charge. It's a whole nother level of power. So there, there is something there, and it's one of the, the laws of high performance that's in Game Changers. So it all comes down to hormones. It comes down to biochemistry. And if you believe the Taoists, their whole practice was how do you be immortal? And for them, controlling your sexual energy was part of immortality. And I've been studying immortality for a long time. Well, people who listen to this show for a long time know that I always reference Seinfeld, and I think they'd be very, very disappointed if I didn't reference it here and talk about the deal episode. Do you know that episode by chance where they all make Masturbate. a deal that they won't, you know, do that for for a while? No, I, I, I've seen almost all oh. the episodes. They have an episode oh my God, about it's one of the best episodes. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Well, they. It's so good. So they make a pact that, you know, money's on the on the line, that they won't do it. And Elaine even gets in as a woman. And uh, and so George <laughs> basically becomes incredibly smart from, from not. And then Elaine gets really dumb from... She's like, it's like leaving the trash, you know, in the dumpster. Whereas George, for some reason, got just immensely intellectual. Um, and then once he had sex, he just went back to being old George. It, but... Yeah. It's kind of real in in that sense. When I've had a bunch of bulletproof followers over the years just reach out and say, "Dave, I heard that podcast. I read that blog post." So I tried it, and these are direct quotes from people. I got a thirty thousand dollar raise after I after thirty wow. days. I started two new companies. Like there's an Im an immense amount of creative potential that is part of the masculine element. And you can literally waste it. Or if you decide to harness it, 
Um, it is a personal development thing. It is an act of will and it's a challenge and it helps to have a partner who's supportive uh, and you can be playful and fun about it. Uh, and if that happens, it is it is a huge, huge boost of power into everything you do. And it actually makes you a better lover too. So there's did the it, big Did outside. it make you a little irritable though? At first, you get a little bit irritable because honestly, I, I would track this like, okay, the frequency of sex after... I I'd ejaculate like oh you wait a day or two like you're less interested and like oh, once and then the longer you go the more frequent your sex is you're like oh my god it, like I can we go again like you know I know it was this morning but like tonight so really? if you are a woman and you want to feel really loved it can be irritating if a guy's like pestering you but when the, you're like okay I know I'm getting what I wanted out of this he's not necessarily getting everything he wanted but it does raise EQ it raises oxytocin and then it tends to help relationships according to the people I've interviewed about it. So mm. it's been beneficial, but yeah, you can, if your testosterone goes too high, you can get irritable. Uh, you can also just get stuff done. picture it like, like being hangry, you know, when someone gets really hungry yeah. and they start getting a little agitated, I would just picture that to happen, but that's good. It doesn't. I mean, it almost seems like you go into like a roid rage or something. Well, they, they talk about make love or war. And seriously, if, if what you're really thinking about because you've got your testosterone levels up because you know, you're pushing your limits, it's sort of like I haven't eaten in two days and there's a piece of ice cream in front of me and I'm really looking right. with a serious degree of lust at that ice cream. It, it, you're more likely to feel lust than anger. Uh, and just be like, mm. I'm, <laughs> I'd really like to do something that right. I'm not allowed to do right now. Um, mm. But it, it it is about self control, and I think it's actually an an un an unspoken about part of of the masculine experience of just saying, look, I'm I'm going to own that as much as I'm going to own you know not being anxious or fearful, and as much as I'm going to own you know not just eating whatever junk food comes in front of me because I'm in charge of myself. Yeah. And but that's that's the, that's that's the common theme, and yeah, exactly, exactly. And biohacking is that you're taking the. Co- the control. You're yeah. not saying that some, it's the same thing in dating, right? For a lot of guys that come to me for dating advice, it's because they're stating that somebody else has control over them. She's doing this to me. She's doing X, Y, and Z. What does it mean? Where did I go wrong? But the common theme that, that I definitely got from everything that you're saying is that at a certain point in time, you made the decision to say, no, I'm in charge of this. And now I'm going to figure out how to make these things hap- happen. And that's that's what biohacking is, right? It, it is. It's about changing the environment around you and inside of you so that you have full control of your biology. And if your biology is, you know, I'm not going to be reactive when you know the girl I'm dating uh, does something to push one of my buttons, which you know, maybe the button that was really just like, can you take care of me? But, you know, you read it as you're criticizing me and there's all the relationship stuff. Okay, I'll tell you, if you have enough energy in your brain, you'll handle it like a man. <laughs> and if right. you have low blood sugar, or if you have a lot of trauma and, and you know family stuff you haven't dealt with, you're going to handle it in a way that you don't respect when you think about it. So it's like you'll do less things you're ashamed of when your hormones work, when your metabolism works, and when you do the work to have healthy relationships. And along the way, not acknowledging the incredible power um, of sex in in that whole equation is something that's missing from a lot of the the health conversations. You really get the kind of the the flippant, you know, how to have better sex now thing. But no one ever says, look, you know, the three things that your body really cares about is not getting eaten, making sure you eat everything tasty, and then getting okay. some. Yeah, <laughs> just adjust those needs. And man, once you own those needs, you're you're the king or the queen, as the case may be. I love that. That's the perfect place to end this show. Dave, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about this because we we typically don't talk about biohacking and I, we've talked about it a few times. Like, oh, we do every time. No. Every show. I, well, yeah, yeah, I guess that is true. I guess we're talking about taking, no, taking I'm, control. I know, but well, I guess totally not kidding. in those terms. So even even last night and, you know, when Kristen had said you were coming on the show, I was like, oh my God, how, what do I talk to him about? I didn't wasn't really sure how to gear it because I didn't have a full understanding of gearing it towards our audience. But I think everything you just said in that last statement summed it up perfectly that you, you can t- you can take control of your life. And here is or are multiple ways to do it. So thank you so much for coming on to our show and sharing that information with us. Please tell people, again, the the list of resources that you have because you have your website, your book, All right. your podcast, a ton of things. Check out my new book. It's called Superhuman. When you buy it, it's going to teach you a lot of the stuff I just talked about. 
And if you send me your receipt to daveasprey.com, I will give you eight interviews with like the top people in the field that are going to share cool stuff with you. And go to Bulletproof Radio. And if you haven't tried Bulletproof Coffee, I don't know what planet you're living on, but seriously, that energy in your brain thing, it actually works. You can pick up Bulletproof Coffee anywhere you like, including Bulletproof.com. Amazing. All I've right. I've been taking my brain oil, octane brain oil. octane, yeah. Yes. And if you can tell, I'm doing amazing this episode, so... You sound so smart. I know. I know. I was slightly turned on by you during the show. Anyway, new episodes of the Ask Win podcast come out every uh, Thursday. See, I'm not taking it yet, and that's why I almost screwed up with the date of our show. Every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I also release them on Friday on YouTube. So go to youtube.com slash Marnie Kenris slash listen to our podcast. This guest was awesome. Kristen, you are awesome too. Do you want to tell people how to get some dating advice from you? Yeah, if they want to learn how to banter with the ladies, go to kristenandchill.com or if they want their profile made over, check uh, check out that website as well. And also you guys can listen to my episode that I did with Dave, which I've gotten a lot of good messages about. And I was just a little afraid because I thought, who am I going on a biohacking show? Um, but Dave, I got a lot of really nice messages. So um, thank you for that. And uh, you guys listening can check that out as well. At Bull- Bulletproof oh, Radio. Yeah. You're welcome. And I just have to say, biohackers are usually nice people because They're being so an nice. asshole is, is makes you tired to be an asshole. So yeah. you have to be nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, they have a, an ulterior motive then. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. I just want them to be nice to me because they love me. <laughs> All right, we will see you guys next week. 